I remember, it's been years ago, but I was there twice in the beautiful little village of ours, and that's just what it is even today. It's just a little village, tiny, tiny as can be. It's not all like Lourdes or Fatima where it's um, all these different people, but you do get quite a few tourists coming. But nevertheless, it is a proper village still with its inhabitants and farmers that live around the area. And everything closes around five or six, all the streets. It's only one main street, really, and then a bunch of farm roads, but it all closes early. But one of the things that I remember seeing in ours is this statue of the cure of ours and a little boy. And now this statue is far away from the church, out in the on one of the hills, surrounded by cornfields. I think they were cornfields anyway. But in any case, there was a statue with the curé and this little boy. And this marks the spot where they actually met, when the curé was made pastor of that village in ours. He was a little lost. For, from that town, you can, from that hilltop, you can see about two or three other villages. So he was confused, didn't know which one was ours. And he said, little boy, famous words of ours. Little boy, if you can show me the way to ours, then I will show you the way to heaven. Beautiful thoughts from the curé of ours. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, life. It's all about getting to heaven. Nothing else matters. In fact... If it does matter, it's all because that's how we get to heaven, whether it's through the cross or through anything else, suffering, your duties, whatever it might be. All of that is ordered and should be ordered in such a way as to get you to heaven. It's all about the salvation of souls. That's why our Lord came. That's why he died on the cross. And that's why the cure of ours became a priest. You know, the devil was forced to reveal to him once that the curé was so holy and so devout, such a good priest, that if there were two or three more just like him, then the kingdom of Satan would be brought down. That is how good a priest he was. And it all started with penance. They... St. Cajetan, whose feast we had just, uh, just a couple of days ago, he said once, everyone's life, path to heaven, is one of two paths, either that of innocence or that of penance. If you have not lived an innocent life, then your life, your path to heaven, must be that of penance, to make up for all of the sins committed. And that's a beautiful thing to keep Keep in mind, two paths to heaven. And if you're not innocent, then you must be doing penance for sins. The curé lived an innocent life from the time of his cradle. He was most devoted to Our Lady and the Rosary and the Holy Mass. Much like like us, he was forced to go to Mass in a barn. They would hide the priest. It was during the time of the French Revolution. And they would hide the priests. He would come secretly at an arranged time and location, offer mass in barns or wherever they could, and then go their way. So it was that that he did. But later on, he didn't need so much to do penance, for he was innocent. But he gave his whole priestly life over to doing penance for others, for sinners. He once said, if you want to convert sinners, here's things that that I would recommend. He said, you can offer yourself as a victim for the conversion of sinners for 8 to 15 days. I don't recommend that to anyone unless you first get the permission of a confessor. But he would tell his penitents that sometimes. Or to, to sleep on the floor for the conversion of sinners or to fast, or to pray, to attend masses for the conversion of sinners. 
because he said that not only when you convert a soul, a sinner, not only do you save that person's soul, but in doing so you save your own as well. That's a famous maxim that many saints have told us. If you save another's soul, in doing so you save your own. Always keep it in mind and, and pray and labor for sinners. But the cure, think of it, how much penance he did. Almost as soon as he was ordained, he started his work in the confession, confessional, and it says that he started neglecting meals here and then, now and then, rather. And then it, that became a habit and then a way of life so that he rarely ate. They say he could go, he could eat two or three times a week, two or three meals, that is, a week, and still sustain himself, have enough energy to go into the confessional at midnight and then stay there for 18 hours during the day, whether it was cold or hot. He would then eat rotten food. He once tried to live on grass, too, eating grass. He said it didn't work out too well for him. He said, our constitution is much different than that of a cow. And so he said, it didn't work. Those fathers of the desert who lived on herbs and, and grass and things like that, he said, those are real saints. I'm not a saint. That's what the cure said. But he did all of these fasts and he experimented with different penances in order to win the salvation of souls. And do you know what the end result was? When he came to ours, you probably all know this, this the village, the parish, was almost nothing. They didn't come to Mass on Sundays because they worked. And they were given over to dancing, which was some sort of a bad dancing, and other vices. But he would sometimes preach. He had a church that wasn't much bigger than this, slightly bigger, wider maybe, and a few side chapels, but not much bigger than this ch church here. And he would keep the doors open so that people could hear him preaching. And it would they'd get curious and come to the door and they'd hear him, and they'd be won over by his words. But you see, his, his whole village was converted. They came to, to daily Mass. They did their Easter duty. They were faithful to their rosaries. They did all the things that a faithful Catholic will do, so much so that you can see the Ars Cemetery and the names of all of his parishioners that are buried there. He said that this is not so much a cemetery as a reliquary. For all of these people, he said, about, those, about his parishioners, they have become great saints. That was the result of this man's prayer and penance for the conversion of sinners. Don't take it lightly. We all have family and friends who need a conversion. And if you don't pray for them, if you don't sacrifice for them, who do you think is going to? And if you don't sacrifice for them, where is the grace going to come from for them to convert, to save their souls? Always remember, don't take it lightly. Even the tiniest penance, united with a confident prayer to the Almighty, is enough to win the conversion, a great conversion, of some poor sinner. And it might mean that poor sinner's salvation. You show me the way to ours, and I'll show you the way to heaven. That's what we must be to our friends and our relatives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.